This is a presentation of Channel 31, a public access channel representing the community and the schools. The material is not intended to espouse a particular viewpoint. The taping for our programs is done by volunteers and students from all of the schools. The broadcast schedule is published on Saturday by the Daily Reporter and runs daily on Channel 31. The times given are for the 9 a.m. broadcast. There is also broadcasting at 12 noon, 4 and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. If you would like to be a volunteer or like to have more information on programming, please call 279-9711 and ask for Channel 31 information. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to the 122nd commencement exercises of Coldwater High School. Would you please rise and join in the invocation given by Sonia Smith. We look up to you, O Lord, Father of all who love and fear you, to acknowledge that you are sovereign Lord of heaven and earth. We have come to the end of our high school careers and we thank you for the freedom we have had to pursue knowledge and learning. We thank you for the school, our teachers, our parents, and for every opportunity we have had to improve our minds and bodies. We pray for everyone who takes part in our ceremony today. Especially we pray for the graduates who are leaving school, that they may learn of your wisdom in the days ahead and understand the great truths on which our nation was built. We pray that we may find the true happiness and true prosperity that come from walking in your ways. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. This year marks a difference in our normal procedure. For the first time, we are using the eighth semester grades, which finished up in an abbreviated fashion this week due to the rain, to determine the final ranking of the class members. And at this time, I would like to announce 
and have those students stand who are the top 10 according to grade point. And these are alphabetical, not in order of finish. Tracy Barker, Wayne Burke, Jason Coyle, Courtney Cumming, Scott Davis, Marsha Fuller, Jenny Lockwood, Sonia Smith, Janet Weir, and Michelle Warden. These are our top ten. It has been an interesting semester and the challenges of senioritis plaguing those who were at the top at the end of the seventh semester trying to hang in there. The salutatorian for the class of 1989, Miss Courtney Cumming. Courtney, would you come up here? I'd like to present to you the folder and scholastic achievement. Thank you. Your pin as salutatorian and a $100 scholarship from the C. Lester Luce Community Scholarship Fund. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. After all of the debate in physics and calculus and AP English and foreign language, we ended up with co-valedictorians. To receive their certificates and their $200 scholarships and pins, we need Michelle Warden and Jason Coyle to step forward, the valedictorians. First of all, we're going to give you a scholarship. And Good job. Ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the graduating class of 1989, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for attending today's ceremonies. This day marks for us the climactic end to 13 years of schooling, which started way back in 1976. 1976 is the United States Bicentennial. Watergate was just four years old. Jimmy Carter had just been elected president of the United States. Magic Johnson was still in high school. When we first entered elementary school, I don't think any of us ever dreamed that this day would come. All we cared about was who would be first captain for kick base or our position in the four square line. But even those simple times were part of our ongoing educational process. Add to that the experiences gained through athletics and other extracurricular activities, relationships built through the years, and of course time in the classroom, and the sum of all these different areas is education that we have gained. It is now time to take that education and proceed with our lives, whether that means entering college, the workplace, or the services. It is a bittersweet time for all of us as we look to our futures with anticipation, yet remember and cherish our relationships and experiences of the past. This class of 1989 will have a strong impact locally and throughout the country as its students will attend universities in such varied states as Alabama, Indiana, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Ohio, Montana, and Illinois. And I'm confident that these students will have a positive impact in these areas. For the graduates of today are the country's leaders of tomorrow. And as I look at this class, I can say with a veritable certainty that tomorrow is in good hands. These last four years have brought many changes in our lives. We entered high schools as timid, timid freshmen unsure of ourselves and our futures now matured and self-confident people who've chosen a general direction for our lives to follow. And as we move to the future, we must do so with an eye to the past and never forget the people who have made us what we are today. I personally thank my parents and my family for being so supportive throughout the years 
and treating me with kindness and respect. I'd also like to say good luck to the class of 1989 and thank you for four good years. Thank you. My fellow classmates, as we anxiously sit here and await the official conclusion of our high school career, I hope you all are aware of what these past four years have done for us. I am not referring to the abundance of knowledge we've gained by our education, because in time we will forget some of these things. Looking back, I believe these were years when we began to learn more than facts and formulas in textbooks. These past years have given us the opportunity to set goals for ourselves. Whether they were academic, athletic, or other personal goals doesn't matter. The important thing is that each of us decided what we wanted to accomplish, and we have had to work hard to reach those personal expectations. After successfully achieving a goal, the cycle will begin again and ultimately guide us through our entire lives. Another benefit of school has been our exposure to each other. Each of us is unique. We all have our own beliefs, habits, and priorities. Part of growing up is to realize this and to respect people for who they are. Have an open mind to others' opinions. During our lives, we have learned and will continue to learn many things from our friends things that have a significant impact on us and make us more aware and understanding of others. The final outcome of high school has been the chance for each of us to start to become acquainted with ourselves. We have hopefully begun to learn what we enjoy and what we're good at, as well as to like and to believe in ourselves. Now that this maturing process is complete, we are ready to begin the next stage of our lives and to make our mark in the world. A very dominant concept in the world today centers around the word success. I'm sure that all of us are hoping to be successes later in life. But what do we mean by the word success? Is it having fame, fortune, and being the best? The art of success means much more than this. Success is doing the things you know you should do. It entails discipline and diligence. Success is not confined to any one part of your personality, but is related to the development of all the parts, body, mind, heart, and spirit. It is making the most of your total self. Success is discovering your best talents, skills, and abilities, and applying them where they will make the most effective contribution to your fellow men and women. Success is being happy with what you do. It is falling in love with your work. It demands intense concentration on your chief aim in life. It is focusing the full power of all you are on what you have a burning desire to achieve. Remember that success is 99% mental attitude. It is having the courage to meet failure without being defeated. It is refusing to let present loss interfere with your long-range goals. Success is relative and individual and personal. It is your answer to the problem of making your minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years add up to a great life. I am confident that each of us graduating today has the ability to become a success. Keep your goals alive and strive to be all you can. Nothing can be taken for granted in this world of ours, so it's up to us, the class of 1989, to make the difference. Thank you. I suppose I'm here today because I've done other speeches and seem competent, <laughs> and they probably trust me to pass on some worthwhile advice about how to make it through life or some such, but uh, I haven't been out in the real world, and I really 
don't know exactly what it takes. <laughs> However, my father told me something that I think should qualify. To succeed, initiative is more important than education. Together, they can do wonders. So everyone should get a good education just in case they ever get some initiative. I would like to thank everybody for the last four years of my life. My friends, who usually don't get credit but deserve so much. My teachers, who work to do their jobs and they still get criticisms from all the students. The faculty, who try their best to do what they think is right and they still get attacked no matter which way they go. And especially my parents, who've done for me something that I don't think a lot of parents would do. They've treated me like a real person. They've allowed me to make my own decisions. I think that this is what has contributed the most to what I've become. Since they've respected me, I've learned to respect myself. And with this, I can do whatever I, as an individual, think is right, without worrying about what the rest of the world thinks. Amazingly enough, this has brought me respect from other people, not only from my peers, but also from my teachers and from other adults that I've come into contact with. That's a neat feeling. By respecting myself, I've never been trapped into doing something I didn't want to do. And through the respect others have given me, I've been able to continue doing what I want, and most of the time, with a little work, been able to get what I wanted. Respect is a powerful thing. Excuse me. <laughs> I'd just like to say that uh, I've had a lot of fun in cold water, and um, I hope that everyone was listening, even though I know you all just want to get out of here. And uh, thank you. We are also departing in our normal graduation ceremonies because we have a special occasion this year. And that is the fact that an institution within an institution is going to retire after 41 years at Coldwater High School. And so I'd like to bring up Mrs. Ann Hayes to make her comments about the class of 89 and also to receive a surprise bumper sticker or bumper plaque from her friends at high school. Ann? Well, thank you. I understand that's from Sonny. This is to the class of 89. I've enjoyed this group tremendously. 47 years ago, I was, like they are, among a group to graduate. Sounds like a long time, but it's gone. <laughs> I was standing up in front of my class giving my valedictory speech. They didn't think I was that smart. And I felt the same that they do now, like an Indy 500 racer before the big race, nervous, uncertain, and anxious. I wanted to get on with it, get on with the big race. As you do, I had, familiar, had finished 13 trial years to familiarize myself with the track that lay ahead. My engine needed constant work to keep it in tune, even more so now for the laps ahead in the real race in life. You two are in the same position. Only I am facing my final laps and you are just beginning. Yes, seniors, this is our time. Your time to graduate and mine to march out with the final senior class. As a teacher, I always enjoyed having, having students tell me thanks for helping them, for learning, yet for having fun doing it. My thanks came from seeing students go out and do the best they can in whatever they do, whether it be a top official in the government, no, not George, an MSU bas baseball coach, an editor on a newspaper, a truck driver, a factory worker, a service man or woman, a teacher, a principal, an administrator, 
or even a garbage collector. We all collect a lot of garbage in life, I'm sure. I can say with pride I let these, had these people in class. I may not have helped them much, but I knew them as individuals and respected them as such, just as Mrs. Lynn did. Tonight I want to reverse my role. It's time that I thank you, as well as former students, some of whom are grandparents to the kids I have. Thanks for proving to those who said you were the worst freshman class to ever hit Coldwater High School. <laughs> that you are, in fact, a great class with many worthy accomplishments. I had heard this of other classes in the 50s, in the 60s, and the 70s, and believe me, you are mild compared to some of those I had. <laughs> Out there, maybe. <laughs> but they made it, and so will you. Thanks for keeping me humble when I became arrogant because I am the ruler and you are my subject. Too often we teachers enjoy the authority and power we have. Too often we forget that we're teachers, not dictators, but human beings. Humility is so good for the soul. Thanks for being there when I was having a bad day, for realizing that I am human and not a figurehead, and for forgiving me when I may have spoken harshly or yelled at you. Thanks for making the classroom a place to look forward to, to know that each day would bring something different and challenging. Thanks for allowing me to know you as individuals, whether I had you in class or not, and for being there in the early morning to give me a good start for the day your smiles, quick wit, and music are enough to make anybody feel good. Thank you for not making me use assertive discipline. <laughs> for not having to humiliate you with checks. For whether to talk to you if there was a problem. Thanks for bringing me back to reality when I became too idealistic, thinking I could solve all the problems of the world and education. And believe me, there are plenty. Thanks for proving to the Board of Education and others that you, the young people, are the best part of the whole school system. All other things are technicalities. You make the place alive and challenging. Thank you, as Reverend Charles Swindoll said, for your gut-level honesty, for your resilience, amidst the disillusionment of parents who split up, and for your effort to stay morally pure while wading through a cesspool of magazine rack, lurid rock concerts, and movies filled with lust and profanity. Thanks for keeping me young inside and for letting me share just a small part of your life. Thanks for making me an honorary member of your class and giving me the golden rule and Jimi Hendrix purple haze. <laughs> and finally, thank you for being my friends. But most of all, thank you for being you. You may not be perfect, but who is? I'm going to miss the school, my messy classroom and desk, the infamous dungeon, the smell of chalk and asbestos, <laughs> the hot, hot room in the spring and fall, the crowded halls, the Mexican-Italian lunches, <laughs> the reading of your thoughts on paper as well as on desks, and bulletin boards, and every place else in the place, the empty library, the TV studio, and Becky, the other people I have worked with, my two bosses, Stan and Jeff, the secretaries, Dee, Debbie, Kim, Karen, and so on, Sonny, Chico, Jean, the custodians, and the, my colleagues, but most of all, I will miss you, the young people. And now as you're about to graduate, I say graduates, start your engines. Check your spark plugs. 
Make sure all parts are functioning. Make certain the fuel is sufficient, and most of all, that the motor is tuned up for the biggest race of your life. Don't go too fast so you miss the beauty of life. Some obstacles may set you back, but learn from them. Go to the pit stop. Get back in your car and try again. And by all means, take God along with you as a co-driver. He won't steer you wrong. But before you get too revved up, I have a few final words. I wish Mrs. Lynn were here to share this memory with us. She, as I, believed that every kid, regardless of who he, she was, deserved to have someone to listen to and have someone who cares. I know Gwen is up there smiling down at you and think, saying, thanks, God, for, great, for doing it. He, excuse me, I lost my page. <laughs> okay, there it is. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, Mrs. Lynn is probably the greatest loss of this system with her empathy and understanding of the underdog, with her counseling of a student in trouble, and with her ready smile and quick wit. I know I miss her and I always will. Her philosophy in mind during our time at CHS can be best expressed in the following poem by M. Joy. To my teenagers, it's hard sometimes when people are changing their lives to understand each other or even to talk. You are struggling right now for independence and the right to live your own way. And I sometimes struggle for the strength to let you do it. I wish now and then for the days when a kiss or a hug could make your world bright again. But your world is more difficult now and you want to make your own way in it, which is as it should be. Only, I only want you to know that when you get hurt, I will hurt for you. And that deep down, I always have confidence in your ability to find your place in your world. If you ever need a caring heart or someone to listen to your deepest dreams of concerns, I will be there. I will be there for you. And remember, above all else, that I love and care for you. Thank you. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coldwater High School, and we believe he represented the highest standards of character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. And on May 25th in 1982, John lost a year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we, the faculty and staff, of Coldwater High School would like to honor a student who represents the high standards that John exemplified. Tonight, or this afternoon, we would like to recognize David Martinson as a recipient of this award. David, would you stand? I want to correct, uh, congratulate the class of 1989 and especially its special member, Mrs. Hayes, who has eloquently explained what it's like to spend a number of years being a high school student, probably the longest high school uh, schedule anybody ever had. My congratulations to both. Will the members of the class of 1989 please rise? On behalf of the faculty and administration at the high school, I present the class of 1989 to the Board of Education. 
and in so doing, certify that each member has met the requirements for a diploma and is entitled to all of the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. By the authority of the State of Michigan vested in the Board of Education and by them delegated to me as President, I hereby confer upon you the diploma of the Coldwater High School. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, class of 1989, co-valedictorian Michelle Lynn Gordon. Jason Robert Coyle. Wayne Moses Burke. President of the class of 1989, Jessica Ann Eckmoody. Treasurer of the class of 1989, Sonia Marie Smith. Jesse Raymond Barrow. Tracy Vernon Gilpin. Christopher E. Magoon. Jason Wynn Blair. David Paul Grahalski. <laughs> Brad Allen Grahalski. Craig Douglas Elkins. Daniel Thomas Peruki. Gardner H. Miller. Larry L. Parshall, Jr. Brett Arthur Paradine. Shannon H. Fillmore. Michelle Lee Morningstar. <laughs> Brian Darrell Odisher. <laughs> James Michael Vaughn. Amy Jo Yearling. Don M. Norton. Stacy Marie Burns. Jolie Ann Mancino. Sarah Catherine Moore. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Dutcher. Holly M. Pierce. Sharla Janelle Anderson. Heidi Lynn Rogers. Thank you. 
Denise Ann Ford. It's a miracle! <laughs> Denise Deanne Dayton. <laughs> Catherine Helen Knapp. Darcy Lee Martin. Michelle Therese Weiser. Lori Ann Boyer. Heather Michelle Olmstead. Don Nichelle Marriott. <laughs> Kelly Lynn Scott. <laughs> Wendy Ann Bushhouse. Jill Renee Strasser. Jennifer Christine Fox. Brent Allen Mercer. Janet Irene Weir. Robert William Iwanaki. Heidi Marie Paradigm. Bridget Marie Lemons. Dina Marie Halferty. Sean Marie Scheidler. Dolly May Brian Black. Amy Joe Clark. Toby Lynn Stetler. Michelle Ann Smith. Rhonda K. Van Slyke. Michael William Sims. <laughs> Timothy Scott Hauber. Brian James Fodell. David Gregory Martirana. Mark Stephen Warden. Kyle Thomas Rimby. Brian Guy Feller. Stephen Henry Scorfar. Tracy Ray Greshaw. Douglas Richard Rogers. Stephen Craig Fox. Daniel Lee Speaker. Tyler James Butters. Robert C. McCullough. John Robert Cook. Kobe Daniel Smith.
Michelle Lee Volkner. Robin Lynn Kiesler. Mark E. Bowman. Colby E. Eaton. Dwayne Stephen Dunn. James Allen Coleman. Jared Michael Blair. Clinton J. Hulleberger. Tracy Lynn Macklin. Mary Amanda Lefever. David Scott Evans. Robert Michael Daniels. Todd E. Mitmesser. Jeffrey Clinton Cosgrove. Lance Michael Knapp. Matthew David Ertz. Tracy Marie Barker. David Don Martinson. David L. Zimmerman. Dustin Travis Dean. Robert L. Miller. Kenneth Gerald Birch. Nicole Stacy Olson. Jeffrey Scott Parlberg. Gretchen Lynn Repka. Karen Irene Hiscock. Foley. David Edward Watson. Nicole Lynn Smoker. Benjamin David Eby. Devin Wayne Feller. Michael Anthony Lamb II. Jason Lynn Bullett. Troy Richard Jackson. David Van Wy. Aaron Gerald Downs. Timothy Lee Porter.
pitcher, Gene Foster. Jason Eric Goodwin. David Brent Rittenhouse. Tracy Sue Wood. Chad William Darby. Chad William Rodesiler. Norman Edward Snow. Brent Travelby. Jason Thomas Nowicki. Connie Dawn Cole. Christina Marie Tillotson. Kimberly Ann Shaw. Kathy Ann Maurer. Bobby Joe Piper. Bauer, Bauer. Geraldine Ray Barnett. Debbie Sue Converse. Bailey Kalantip Barnes. Lisa K. Bohannon. Pamela Jo Hale. Anissa May Hart. Lynn Patton. <laughs> Billy Dwayne Stempion. <laughs> Tiffany Ann House. <laughs> Scott Frederick Davis. Corey Christopher Wood. Lisa Suzanne Farst. Shelby Lynn Thornton. Linda Marie Peterson. Amy Sue Reisdorf. Andrea Yunsing Chan. Jenny Elizabeth Lockwood. Monica Lynn Peruki. Shelley Lorraine Winnie. Stacy Ann Force. Linda Joe Hawley. <laughs> Tina Ann Peroni. Jonathan Paul Fedewa. Aaron J. Zabonik. Vice President of the Class of 1989, Rebecca Lynn Strobel.
Jennifer Ann Burr. Ellie Pam Billman. Scott Allen Cooper. Andrew David Young. Kristen Elizabeth Hopkins. Scott Gordon Lindsley. Gerald Clifford Schultz, Jr. Gregory Lee Ware. James Glenn Griffith. Eric Lee Gorney. Derek Roman Paydar. Frederick Edward Wagner. Grant Harold Thomas. Nathan L. Cohen. Charles Randall Thorne. Philip Andrew Jennings. Larry Robert Lunsford. Stanley Leroy Reisner. Vanessa Ann Begley. Charlotte Diane Ferry. Darren Earl Holland. Timothy Eric Stempion. Randall David Linton. Joseph R. Ansari. Martin Lance Minnick. Good job, Lance. Thank you. Russell Chandler Mowen. David Patrick Cross. Thomas Paul Reynolds. Cheryl Ann Stevens. Beverly Ann Rollins. Leanne Yvette Klaus. Heather Marie Swift. Elizabeth Ann Morrison. Nicole Christine Rock. Carrie Louise Richmond. Melinda Louise McDonald. Melissa A. Bartlett. Wendy K. Tulak. Carla Jean Seckler.
Kristen Ann Hadley. Michelle Renee Hart. Kristen Lee Speaker. Brenda Lynn Schaefer. Teresa Ann Miller. Sonia Lee Moffat. Linda Marie Tappenden. Tanya Lee Moffat. Charmin Gail Hans. Jeffrey Allen Beer. Holly V. Grahalski. Christina May Leo. Lisa Irene McCurley. Lisa Michelle Langwell. Eric Lawrence Crippen. Christina Louise Boone. Barbara N. Hauk. Nikki Lynn Balzo. Tammy Marie Potter. Gloria Elizabeth Lopez. Aaron Michael Dershel. Aaron Travis Garn. Eric Joseph Sebatis. <laughs> Christopher John Hicks. Salutatorian of the class of 1989, Courtney Lynn Cumming. Secretary of the class of 1989, Autumn Suzanne Marson. Joan Elizabeth Monroe.